Let's hang out and do some soul care together in real time. To start us off, we're going to light some incense. If you're not able to light incense or to even light a candle, I know that when I lived in my college dorm, we weren't allowed to have any smoke or any fire in the dorm. So there's so many different incense sprays that you can use. I actually have some of those sprays underneath my little altar space there. Sometimes I use sprays, sometimes I use incense smoke, but in general, I really prefer to use incense smoke. Incense has been used since the beginning of time to cleanse our energetic fields as well as to cleanse a space. And incense even has antimicrobial properties, so you can use it to not just cleanse the energy of a space but also to rid a space of disease, illness, and the cleansing properties of incense are just so so deep and so powerful. I always light incense before, during, and after prayers because I've heard that our prayers can travel with the smoke into the heavens. So that's one of the reasons that I just love incense so much. I also found myself really dependent on incense because I am an empath, I am a highly sensitive soul, and that means that as I navigate life, I tend to pick up different people's energies, picking up ideas, and things like that. So I like to use energetic cleansing tools like incense or incense sprays or practices like the ones that we're doing here together because it can really restore the mind, body, and soul and just help you feel a lot more mentally clear. Once I light my incense, I like to move into some meditation practices. I have ADHD, so I am not a fan of stillness meditation. Of course, there's a time and place for stillness meditation and it can be so beneficial. I'm definitely not hating on it, but when I first hop into a meditation or a soul care practice, I allow my body to move however it needs to move, moving at the hips, moving forward and back, allowing myself to chant, to hum, to say om and feel the vibration of the sound through my body. It's it's so important to put your body into different positions, to use different sounds, and to really allow yourself to express. So often in our society, we try to fit in this special box, to sit a certain way, to do the things that are acceptable or will get us the results that we want to get. But what if you gave yourself permission every single day for just a few minutes to just be? to just move how you want to move, to pray how you want to pray, to dance and sing how you want to dance and sing. None of the movements that I have um, in this video were planned, right? All of these movements, everything that I do here is entirely intuitive. And I show you these practices because I want to invite you and encourage you to find your own intuitive practice. A practice that allows you to straighten your spine and connect with your spirit guides and the cosmos above, as well as feel completely grounded and deep in our vision and our purpose here in this lifetime. There's no right or wrong way to connect with your inner self or to give your soul some deep self-care. I like to incorporate different practices that I've found from kundalini, different meditation practices, as well as different yogic practices and yogic philosophies. I find myself just going back to these practices naturally and intuitively whenever I feel called to go back to them. This is a finger mudra practice that is very, very subtle, but it helps cleanse the entire energy field and helps remind us that we are constantly in a cycle of life and death and rebirth. And at every moment, we are in a different point in this cycle and we can just surrender and allow this cycle to continue to pass through. These physical mo movements remind us of these truths and these this intuitive wisdom that we have deep within our heart and deep within our soul. 
When I was first starting to activate my deep intuitive wisdom, it really helped me to watch videos like this to make sure that I was listening to guided meditations and constantly exposing myself to other people that were deeply and completely connected to their own inner guidance, their inner wisdom, and their intuition. Over the years, I felt courage to dedicate myself to a variety of practices, doing kundalini every single day for a hundred days straight, doing yoga three times a day for hundreds of days straight. And as I had the courage to dive into these practices, I noticed myself having more groundedness, more stability, more access to my own intuition. So I I could be less dependent on guided meditations, less dependent on videos like this, and I was able to actually get off screens entirely and enjoy time like this with your inner self and your inner wisdom and your spirit guides. I would say that this is ultimately the goal, to be able to be off screens, to not have to have anything playing, but to feel completely guided by your own inner wisdom. Sometimes we can experience this goal, sometimes we can experience it every day for chapters, and sometimes we experience that and then we might need some guidance, some meditation, we might need to revisit the videos that we once relied on to support us in accessing our own inner wisdom. Eventually, the goal is to be able to move freely within our mind, within our emotions, within our body, and to just observe the self. This is called a vipassana yogic philosophy, being able to observe the things that you do and gain wisdom from your observations. This is so different from how we often go through life needing to first understand something before we actually do the thing. Vipassana encourages us to go about life in the opposite way, to give ourselves the freedom and the courage to take action and to find our understanding along the way. In this practice, I find myself activating the energy field, whispering my prayers and intentions into my hands that I made into the shape of a lotus, and then offering this lotus up to my spirit guides, to my creator, to the beings that I am devoting this practice to. You could devote your practice to your higher self, to your parents, to God to whatever being feels most resonant in your mind, body, and soul. After doing this, I found myself just needing to move some stagnant energy through the body, doing some cat-cow stretches, moving my torso from left to right in a fluid motion, and then I wanted to really nourish my inner child. So I read one of my favorite books that I've always read as a little girl. This is the first time that I've opened this book in maybe 10 or 15 years. The last time I saw this book or heard this book was when it was being read to me when I was so, so little. I've never read it to myself. So it was my first time reading it out loud to myself. And it's so incredible how something as simple as reading a childhood book out loud can truly be a soul experience, a soul nourishing experience, a soul expansive experience. When we allow ourselves to really be present with the emotions and the thoughts and the things that are coming up for us, we allow ourselves to expand. So what you're probably seeing here in the video as you're hearing my words are a lot of tears. I immediately burst out crying upon cracking this book open and the tears just kept flowing and flowing and flowing even more. I've worked so hard to decondition myself, to reparent myself, and allow myself to see my tears as an expression of my soul as the body going through its own process 
of letting go. We don't even need to know what we're letting go of. I know that I wasn't sad at all in reading this book, but the tears were just flowing and flowing and they did not stop. I consider this to be such a win, such an expanse for my heart, such nourishment for my soul, and this is exactly why we do these meditative practices. We give ourselves the space to expand and to grow and to be nourished even in ways that we can't understand and we don't have to understand it. We don't have to put a limit on it or a meaning to it or package it in a way that is acceptable or understandable. It is completely okay to read a childhood book and just cry and cry and cry and for that to be part of your daily soul care activities. I started meditating 20 years ago and it's been such a journey of evolving my daily practice to being something that nourishes my soul in all chapters, in all phases, and in all evolutions. I want to remind you that you don't have to pretend to have things together when you're doing your own self-practices. Doing soul care isn't about being performative, it isn't about making things look a certain way, it's about being who you are, whether that's crying, singing, happy, you can see just how many emotions we've gone through together in less than 12 minutes. This is what it is to just be an unmasked soul, to be unbridled and wild. It takes practicing, even for just 15, 20, 30 minutes a day, practicing being your authentic self, practicing thinking that you are cool as your authentic self, practicing just being without performing or escaping, so often we try to find the practices that are proven to work, the perfect hypnotherapy to rewire your subconscious mind, to allow you to be in your highest alignment. And yes, I'm a hypnotherapist, so of course I believe in those practices, and of course they work. But I want you to know that these practices are inviting you too. You don't have to always do the proven researched stuff. You don't have to always do the things that make sense. You don't have to do the things that your friends do or the things that your siblings or family does. You can give yourself the opportunity to do something different, to try something different, to be there for yourself in a way that you never have before. Because deep, deep down, deep, deep down on a soul level, you know that you deserve soul nourishment, deep and complete soul nourishment. And it's okay if it doesn't come to you through a brand new lip gloss or a new book or a meditation or maybe even a practice like this. But I want you to know that you deserve it and that it is on the horizon for you. So keep going. I'm cheering you on and I'm journeying in this expansive soul journey with you.